In this video, I'll give an overview of CorelDRAW's text tool and its various options, and I'll also introduce the text docker. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. The text tool can be found on the toolbar, or I can press F8. My default font and size for paragraph text are listed in the property bar. The two types of text I can create with the text tool are artistic text and paragraph text, and both will be covered more in depth in later tutorials in this series. There are a few ways to set defaults for both types of text, and one place for this is the Object Styles Docker. Under Default Object Properties, I can set the default for several types of objects, including artistic text and paragraph text. When I click once where I want to place the text, the text I'm about to type will be artistic, and I'll see my default font and size for artistic text in the property bar. I'll start typing, pressing enter where I need line breaks, then click outside to finish. I'll use the pick tool to select this artistic text. The property bar has options to set the position, size, scale, and rotation angle of the text. I can also mirror in both directions. I can choose a new font and set a font size here or drag a corner handle to change size. I can left click a color swatch to fill the text and right clicking a color creates outlines. If the font family provides these options, I can also choose the bold, italic, or bold italic variation of the font face. For any font, I can also choose to underline. I can use this icon to change horizontal alignment. The next two options are relevant for paragraph text, which is generally used for larger amounts of text. To create paragraph text, I'll go back to the text tool and click and drag a rectangular frame that will contain the text. Now the property bar shows the default font and size for paragraph text. I can type in the text or paste it in from another source. I'll click outside to finish, then select the paragraph text. Now in the property bar, I can add bullets or drop caps. If the open type icon is enabled, then I'll get an indicator when an open type font feature is available for selected text. This will be shown in a later tutorial. The edit text icon opens the text in an editor, in which I can make all of the previously mentioned changes. This editor will also be covered in a later tutorial. And finally, the text icon opens the text docker. I could also find this in the window Dockers menu. In the text docker, I have many additional options for setting properties of selected text, and I have the artistic text selected. The three sections of this docker are character, paragraph, and frame. Under character, I can set the font or font family, as well as size. If a font family is selected, then the font styles will be available in the drop down below. The small boxes to the right of each field are relevant for text created from a text style, and text styles will be discussed in a later tutorial. The next field is for kerning, and would be enabled if I were editing text and had characters selected. Text editing will be covered in a later tutorial. The next field is for setting character fill. I can keep uniform fill and change the color, or switch to a different fill, such as bitmap pattern or fountain fill. Background fill is similar with options that apply to the area surrounding the characters. The last character option is Outline, where I can set a thickness and color for character outlines. Clicking this arrow opens more character options, such as superscripts, capital spacing, strike throughs, and other style features available for the current font. Paragraph options are more relevant to paragraph text, though they will work with artistic text as well. I now have the paragraph text selected. The icons along the top control horizontal alignment, and just below those I can adjust the vertical spacing. The next three options are for indenting of paragraphs, left indenting for all but the first line, left indenting for the first line, and right indenting for the whole paragraph. The two fields to the right set the spacing above and below paragraphs. I can expand the paragraph section to see options for character, word, and multi-language spacing. Below those are options for bullets, drop caps, tabs, and hyphens. Frame options are also more relevant to paragraph text, 
though some of these will also work on artistic text. I can set a background color for the entire text frame, or align to the baseline grid, which aligns text frames to one another so the text will be easier to read. I can also set a vertical alignment, or divide the text into columns. Learning about the text and text docker options discussed here is a great start for learning how to create text in CorelDRAW. Please continue with the tutorials in this series on text to learn about many more text options and features. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the text tool and docker in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.